Good afternoon. I hope you're having a great Monday. I'm Julie Broughton. This is Take Six. The time now is 1235, and this is when we get to spend a little bit of time together after our new newscast and tell you what we're working on for News 6 later today. So it's always nice to have those conversations without the typical time constraints that we have within our traditional newscast. News 6 investigator Mike DeForest is here with us today, and he is working on just a fascinating story. Mike, you are going to be telling us about Clearview AI technology as well the Orange County Sheriff's Office and how they're working together to get a lead on solving crimes. And this is really interesting the way this company works. In a nutshell, it's it's facial recognition technology. We're starting to see it more and more in our daily lives. We were just talking about how on our phones now, it'll pick out other images of you or your family on your, uh, in your photos. That's just a very rudimentary use of facial recognition technology. For the last several years now, uh, a privately owned company called Clearview AI has been compiling a database of, I believe it's about 40 billion, billion images uh, from social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and compiling those images into a database and then providing access to that database to law enforcement. So let's say a crime occurs. One example we're gonna have in the story tonight is a suspected criminal who showed up on a ring doorbell surveillance camera and their law enforcement's able to take that surveillance photo put it into the system and find out if there are any social media images out there that may resemble the person they're looking for. Um, here, here's an example just to show you how it works. This isn't uh, from a crime, but uh, this was an example that the Orange County Sheriff's Office gave us that they did. Um, let me see if I can hold it up here so you can see it without the okay. glare. That's an Orange County detective who is uh, wearing uh, kind of like a surgical mask over his uh, nose and mouth. And they entered that photo into this Clearview AI facial recognition software and almost immediately it came back with this photo of the detective. It was taken at a law enforcement charity event. You know how sometimes you'll go to these charity events or fundraisers and you'll stand, I guess he's standing next to his wife or girlfriend or someone there um, and standing in front of a banner. And this photo actually appeared on the photographer's website. The event photographer who was at this charity event posted all the photos of the attendees. And that's how uh, they were able to match this let's say this was an unknown photo to an event. And now if this was somebody that law enforcement was looking for, they could go to this photographer, say, hey, when was this event? Who was this person? And narrow down who the suspect may be. Wow, so I have to tell you that I couldn't hear you for the first part of our conversation. So because of that, I don't really have a great follow-up question to ask you. I could kind of hear you over my shoulder. I couldn't hear you through my headphones. So what did you not cover that would be, a, if I could have heard, what would be a great question to ask? What, what, what do you want me to you? ask you, Mike? Um, so I, I'm assuming that was a technical end on your end and yes, not on ours. And we yes, didn't yes. bore people with my lips no, flapping no, no, no. here, you were, you yeah, were well, working um, well. I, I think one thing that we're going to bring out in our story tonight is uh, while law enforcement will tell you this is a very valuable tool and a powerful tool and there are certainly people who would be a crime victim who could say that yes yeah, a crime occurred at your home and your surveillance cameras captured an image of someone who wasn't supposed to be there and nobody knew who he was just by looking at him in the old days maybe law enforcement would reach out to news organizations and say hey uh, would you guys publish this photo we're looking for this suspect or they may go on their their social media pages and say hey community help us find this person well now law enforcement can kind of do that behind the scenes mm -hmm. by taking that photo entering it into this facial recognition database and see if they get any potential leads um, so that can be beneficial to crime fighting, but there are a lot of concerns, particularly the American Civil Liberties Union and other uh, privacy groups have expressed concerns about this. Everything from invasion of privacy, the fact that, Julie, some of your social media images may be in this law enforcement database without your permission. But also there have been concerns that uh, it is not always accurate. Uh, some have expressed concerns that uh, when it comes to trying to match a suspect's photo to somebody out there in the real world, it may not be very good with darker skin tones, and that could be a problem. Um, as we will discuss tonight, uh, we, we sat down with the uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office. They were very transparent about how they're using this new technology. They compared it to how uh, there was new technology a few years ago with this uh, 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 forgive me, I'm forgetting the name now, the, the genealogy mm -hmm. DNA, where uh, you submit your DNA to one of these companies like Ancestry DNA. And because of that, law enforcement is able to arrest one of your cousins for a crime that happened 30 years ago. Um, same type of advancement, uh, but there needs to be 
protocols in place to make sure it's used responsibly. So tonight, uh, the Orange County Sheriff's Office talks to us about the policies that they have put in place to regulate their own use of facial recognition technology. And in a nutshell, it's it, it, they say it is just a tool to come up with a lead. Give us an idea of who this person might be, but they say that they would never make an arrest based on the fact that they entered a surveillance photo and then this facial recognition database came up with another person who looked very similar. Yeah. They're not gonna just go out and arrest this person, they tell us under their policy. It just points them in the right direction so they mm -hmm. can now start investigating this person and see if there is other evidence that may link them to the crime. Well, we are looking forward to seeing your story. When I was Googling this before we went on, one of the things that came up as you start typing in Clearview AI is, does Clearview AI have my photos? And you're saying the chances are pretty good. Yes, they, they, they scraped 40 billion images wow. off the internet. And one of the things you're going to hear tonight is like, oh, if you set your Facebook privacy settings to private, they're not going to get those photos. But as in this example that I showed you here of this detective, he mm -hmm. attended a charity event mm -hmm. and the photographer was there and obviously he volunteered to get his photo taken at this event but how many times in social media we're hanging out with our friends uh, mm -hmm. at a restaurant or something and there's five or six of us and somebody yeah. posts that photo up there and they may make it public mm -hmm. now if my photo were to be similar to someone who committed a crime through mm -hmm. this technology they would find that photo of me and my friends at dinner mm -hmm. and might be able to pinpoint who posted that photo take it to that friend and say, hey, who's this guy? Oh, Mike DeForest? Yeah, we're going to go question him. Wow. All right. What time does your story air tonight? Six o'clock tonight, Julie. It's really Fabulous. interesting. We can't wait to see it. Thank you so much, Mike. See you then. Let's get a check of your forecast for you now. It's pretty not a bad day out there. Still a little bit on the breezy side. This is what it looks like for you right now. As we check out the satellite and radar imagery, some cloud cover hanging around, but some sunshine out there as well. So overall, not too bad of a day for us. Temperatures right now generally in the 70s. Here's a wider look out though. We do have some changes on the way because of that front that you see off to our north and west. That comes through Wednesday into Thursday night, and that brings with it an increased chance of showers overnight Wednesday and into the first part of the day on Thursday. Right now we're sitting at 77 in Orlando, 75 in Kissimmee, 76 in Cocoa Beach, and 73 if you are in Palm Coast. Very breezy out there, especially along the coast. If you happen to be heading to the beach today, again, we are looking at an elevated risk of rip currents. 19 mile per hour winds right now in Melbourne. Breezy as well in Kissimmee with 17 mile per hour winds all coming out of the east in Ocala. Your winds are at 21 miles per hour. Here's how it looks for the next seven days. We warm up just a few degrees throughout the day today, then all the way up to 85 for tomorrow and Wednesday out ahead of that front that passes through during the first part of the day on Thursday and look behind that as we head into our Easter weekend 74 on Friday, 79 on Saturday and then back into the low 80s for your Sunday. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is at a hurricane conference. Meteorologist Jonathan Kagas will be in with us starting today on News 6 at 4, so he'll break down the timing of this for you. Lisa Bell, Ginger Gadsden and I will all see you on News 6 at 4 as well. If you have any questions or comments for us here at Take 6, head to Click Orlando dot com slash take six and let us know what's on your mind. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you at four.